This is GA Center, your look at the Grand Arena Championships of content creators from around the globe. Here are your hosts, Flair from Gaming Embers and the Nev from the Escape Pod cast. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GA Center. It is our monthly roundup of run month two of our GAC season. And uh, <laughs> did you, did you I think have, everybody's you just stumbling through that? Yeah, yeah, let's do it now. Let's, it's the end of the month, so let's. Woo oh no! It's not a twist cap. Damn it! <laughs> hey, hey, I, I'm I'm gonna enjoy I'm gonna enjoy my uh my oh, non alcohol no, 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 related I'm gonna, beverage. I just need to find an edge. <sighs> That's gonna take you too long, Neil. Sorry, buddy, no, you missed not. out. No, it's not. Okay, I need a tougher edge. <laughs> oh. There we go. Oh. Got it off. Got it off. So anyway, oh. it's the end of 3v3. I think everybody is happy. There's there's a couple of competitors that are really happy that uh, 3v3 is over. I am not one of them because I enjoy 3v3. You know I love 3v3. So mm -hmm. I'm not happy to see the back of 3v3. But I did use the desk, Paul. I did use the desk. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, so... Let's get stuck into it, shall we, mate? Yeah, um, guys, as usual, uh, throughout the course of this episode, um, through the month review, um, any bits, cheers, follows, anything like that will be reserved to the end of the show to be recognized. Um, but our lovely moderators in chat will be recognizing you all. Um, anyways, Neil, um, now that's over with. Let's, uh, let's get on with it, shall we? Oh, yeah, let's get on. Cheers. And we start off with Bulldog. Boom! Look at that month. 12 and 0. Totally awesome month. He had a triple whammy. He had two triple crowns. He picked up nine flawless victories and two full clear wins. I mean, oh, I, mean, I, I, I was about to say that it couldn't get any better than that, but I think there is somebody in the league that did better than that. But we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Infinum going 11 and 1 this month. Uh, you know, had a 3 0, a 3 0, a 2 and 1 in week three. You know, everything was super good until he had a super, uh, a super heavy defense to deal with, but he came back with a 3 0 in the last week. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, 24 losses, 36 holds. Um, pretty good. I mean, lacked a full clear in a couple of them, but hey, good job, Infinum. Blah. Nine and three. Nine, oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. If, you, if only you had not missed week two. I mean, this is, this, is, this is how bonkers it is. He missed an entire week, right? But he still got two triple whammies. He still got five flawless victories and four full clear victories. Didn't pick up a triple crown because he, you know, fell over himself. But, oh, two nine and three. battles! I cannot believe how just I mean that th there are some people that didn't miss a week that have weaker stats than this. That's how much you should be kicking yourself, mate. Oh, shut up. Anyways, uh, Commander Cody, uh, man, had had a pretty solid week. Twelve and oh month. Only solid lost. month. Oh, solid. Yep. Solid month. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm still used to weekly. Uh, 12 and oh, only eight losses the entire month. Um, you know, everything, everything just went great for him. He had a solid score to boot with it. Plenty of holds to go with it. Excellent job. Commander Cody. Brain kill. 10 and two. Very, very respectable month. Picked up four flawless victories. Mm. Tripped up him, I tripped up a couple K um, on a couple of occasions, but he still got w full clear wins. He still got six full full clear wins. Had two triple whammies this month, so ten and two for brain kill. Very 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 good stats. Not that many losses. Some good holes. There is the division. There is the table. And oh, Commander Cody has a month better than Bulldog. I mean, you still got to get out early, out of bed early in the day to catch Bulldog. 
this is just one month, but if uh, oh, if he could keep it up, he could definitely uh, he could definitely you know give the uh, give some squeaky bum time to uh, Bulldog, I think. And and there, there's you coming up the rear, mate. I mean, if you hadn't missed that week, if only you hadn't missed that week. But it's not complete and utter unmitigating disaster. You're only one behind Brain Kill, and you're only two behind Infinite. Mm-hmm. So if you just go like twelve and zero. And twelve and zero, and twelve and zero, and oh, twelve and zero. You you could do it. You might do it. You, you never. Well, know. and remember, this is just the month. We're exactly. talking about the month, not the entire season. This OGA is just thing. the month table. We'll show. We'll, don't worry. When we get to the when we get to the end, and we've done everybody, we'll give you a you know we'll give you a look at the final actual tables. This is just for the month. But uh, yeah, let's get right into the div three and div four. Um, we start off with Bringer and guys. Uh, Unfortunately, at the end of today's episode, we will be uh, we will be finished covering Bringer of Death. Um, he has actually uh, gotten rid of his accounts and handed off to someone else, but we'll still give him the coverage that is due. He went three and zero the first two weeks, lacking the full clear in the second week. But uh, week three is when things started to change. He got a two and one. Um, got a bunch of holes while he was doing it, but week four, ah oh, man, he just lost the will to keep playing and uh, went one and two. So. Salutations and see you. Goodbye, sometime, bringer of death. We'll let you know who Bringer's replacement in Division Three is at the end of the show. So stick around to find out who that is. Mm-hmm. The Lone Gunman. Not a big, not a good month. Not a good month at all. Seven and five. It's still above average, but you know, he didn't pick up a single triple whammy. He didn't pick up a single triple crown. He didn't even have a triple. Not, not, didn't even have a regular triple. Did still get some good scores, though. Uh, the banners were there. He got one flawless victory, and he did pick up five full clear wins. So it's not all doom and gloom for the Lone Gunman this month. Stone coming in with a 12-0 and 0 did solid this month. Uh, you know, didn't get, didn't get too many full clears. He did get a triple crown in week three. But the rest of the weeks were, were, you know, were tough. He had a couple losses here, a couple losses there, and, and was just missing triple whammies and full clears by by battles. So, uh, still, 12-0, and 0, ain't nothing to scoff at. Good job, Stone. Oh, Renard the Fox, our favorite German fox from the homeland. Um, wow, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. He, um, <laughs> he, oh, hang on a minute. That's, that, 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 that's, um, yeah, that's, that shouldn't, yeah, never mind. Okay, so he had 10 flawless victories and a full clear, which means he had one whammy and two triple crowns this month. That one loss just totally screwed him over. Oh, what that, that one loss just totally screwed him over. It would have been another triple whammy if he'd hit that, but two triple crowns in a month is Definitely something to be proud of. Just a shame he couldn't go undefeated for the... Uh, just a shame he couldn't go undefeated. Month. But hey, Orlamar come in with a 12-0 this month. Solid job. Mm. Only six losses the entire time. Got a triple crown in week two. Um, and uh, hey, he got he got plenty of clears to, to boot that. Oh, you know, 40 holds. Excellent job. Uh, some solid defensive work as he was going throughout his month. Oh, Moyo. Moyo did not have a good month. Um, so many times he got the full clear, but he was, he just didn't get the win. That was his only problem. I mean, he did pick up one flawless victory and he picked up seven um, full clear wins. But um, so many of those fours, in fact, I think all of those fours were, were, were still full clears, but his opponent just outbannered him. So, uh, mm, a little bit of bad luck, a little bit of bad RNG, but uh, still a good, still a good month for Moyo. Eight and four. But hey, Andy going eight and four actually isn't that bad considering how he normally does. He even got a three and zero, oh, which, as far as I can recall, mm. is the first three and zero oh on GA Center for him. Yeah, that's his first three and zero. Oh. It was his first three and zero. Oh. So first you know, oh, hey, yeah. he may have gone a two and one, a one and two, and a two and one. But hey, he is he is. Proudly shaking his Canadian maple syrup fist <laughs> for that three and zero. Oh, vendetta! Oh, 
My, my poor apprentice didn't go undefeated this month. I was so gutted for him because he was having a, a an absolutely blinding month. I mean, four flawless, four flawless victories, six full clears with a victory, two whammies. So close to a triple crown on two two occasions, but it just yeah it 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 all went wrong in that last week. It really really did go all wrong in that last week. Because uh, one of the weeks was a three and zero, oh, but it, it was just a, a standard triple, no whammy, no crown. But eleven and one is still good. He's still there. He's still gonna be there at the end of the season. Marco had it tough though. Marco went six and six for the month. Ah oh, man, let me tell you, uh, two and one, two and one, one and two, and one and two. Uh, some of his losses were were simply efficiency. Um. Others were just stumbling through a lot of issues, but, uh, but you know, right smack dab in the center. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that actually did at the, uh, at the table. JKW eight and four nice average month. Just didn't really get into a groove this month at all. I mean, he didn't get any triple crowns. He didn't get any triple whammies. He didn't even get any flawless victories. It was all full clears, some of which he got out bannered on and some of which he didn't. He had a moyo month, basically. I mean, he did pick up uh, six full clear victories, but yeah, uh, not the best of months, but not the worst of months. Eight and four for Jake. And there's division three. All of them are, and Stone, only, only, only competitors undefeated. Mm hmm. Look at that. Although, if we go by banners, Orlamar and Renard are definitely doing the work. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, the interest, you're all going to be very, very surprised to see what Division 3 4 looks like when we show you the actual standings at the end of the show. Okay, we're on to. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's your competitor, right? Just, just, just do him. Just do him, all right? <laughs> uh, Fortmart, Fortmart had a had a wonderful month, even though he only went eleven and one. Still went pretty solid. You know, tons of heavy defensive strategies. Um, you know, didn't get the full clear all the time, but he always he also did plenty of those two territory. Uh, just just sneaking by the last minute, uh, even doing one of his GACs in seventeen minutes before the end of the show. But uh, hey, eleven and one, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, we'll see at the end of month how he how he stands compared to you, Neil. Yes, yes, we will. Well, I'm not talking about this month. I'm talking about overall. And so am I. <laughs> so am I. So am I. Going down. <laughs> Beat girl, the queen of the two and ones, or two and ones for the month. Um, it, it does not get more efficient than this. She didn't get any flawless victories. Obviously, she didn't get any triple whammies or triple crowns because every single week was two and one. But guess what she did on every single one of those wins? Full clear win. Eight full clear wins for Geek Girl. You do not get a more consistent competitor in this division. Oma rocking with the 10 and 2. Uh, you know, had an ugly 3-0 to start off. You know, got his full clears in week two. Uh, week three, very shy of some full clears, but uh, week four was the uh, was the one, two round that he had. And oh man, round one was good. Rounds two and three, just plenty of mistakes to go around. Uh, but hey, 10 and two compared to everyone else we have is uh, nothing short to scoff at. Yeah, that, that he had a nightmare week four. Nightmare week four. To go 3-0, and 3-0, and 3-0, and, and then all of a sudden, slap. One and two, yeah, not pretty, not pretty. Oh, Wrangler went eleven and one, had a good month, got a couple of flawless victories, picked up eight full clear wins, and he did get two triple whammies. And drum roll, please. Wrangler gets promoted to Div One next month, so uh, he will be oh. in Div One, and he'll have one of those little icons next to his name. So uh, yeah. Well done, Wrangler. Your GP's gone up. See you in Div 1, buddy. <laughs> Yeti, uh, is this right? I feel like he should have only been, uh, I feel like he should only been 11 and 1. Based you on sure? The, the... He's in chat. Y Yeti, were you 10 and 2 or 11 and 1? 
I think his first loss was in uh, was in week. Yeah, yeah, he was eleven and one. Oh, God, guys. Yeah, I knew no, he was no. eleven Actually, and one. I should have noticed this. That 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 would be because I was looking at GG and one of them was a draw. He got wow. a draw, which he picked up a win for. So yeah, my apologies. Wow. Um, that is not reflective of the end of uh, you know the final standings. Paul does the final standings. He would have picked up that it was a draw that you picked up and not written down as a loss yet. So yeah, eleven and one. Yes. Anyways, um. Yeti was ruthless this month on 3v3s, uh, as he usually is, using swaga.gg, who thankfully helps provide our stats and information for us. Um, you know, using all the tools at his disposal, setting solid defenses, and uh, just smashing his opponents when he can. So, 11 and 1, excellent job. Oh, forgot to turn my page. Come on there, Neil. I forgot to turn my page. I, I, hey, I, I'm not perfect. Well, I am. <laughs> Scribe. Scribe did not have a good month, okay? Four and eight is not a good month, you know? You know you're having a bad day when you're four and eight, okay? He picked up no flawless victories, no whammies, no crowns. He only had two. Two full clear victories. One of the weeks, he wasn't even in it. And the last two weeks were just... One and two, sorry, oh and three and one and two. So uh, yeah, uh, he's had some things going on. Uh, he has reached out to me. He had vacation, um, and uh, you know he he had some real life stuff to deal with. And we all know that you know this game can go and take a running jump when reality strikes because you know reality is more important than Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes. So that explains the poor, 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 poor showing this month. Oh, hi Neil. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. We already did this gig. We already did this bit last week. Stop it. Did we? Yes. Uh, all right. Okay. Fine. We did this bit last week. Ah, oh, dang gum it, Neil. Yeah, Do but I it's really just so good. I am the Grand Arena champion. Sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, dude, you had an awful round one, but uh, week one. But I mean, okay, fine. You went twelve and zero. You happy? Um, so, so this that 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 week that was so bad for me was remind me again. It was still a triple whammy, wasn't it? It was. Um, and so was week two, <laughs> and surprisingly enough, so was week three and week four. That means I'm the only person to get four triple whammies in a month. I mean, hey, mm. you realize you're jinxing yourself right now. I don't you know care. That? I don't care. I'm always going to have that month to look back at. So, Rand, seven and five. Here's the thing, right? Rand, <laughs> like you, missed a week. Rand missed week two. So, seven and five is still pretty good. When you think about it, I mean, mm -hmm. yours was nine and three and you missed a week, which is pretty damn good. Rand going seven and five and missing a week, that's all right. I mean, they, all of those victories before clears didn't pick up any triple whammies or triple crowns. They're going to be flawless victories, but, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, weeks three and weeks four, nice and steady, a two and one, a three and oh, came back, did the business. Nice one, Ran B. We were brothers in, uh, in not participating week two. <laughs> a little gator coming in with 10 and two. You know... He really doesn't like ships and he could have probably gotten a whole lot more full clears if he actually wanted to play with his ships a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, 10 and two, not bad. I know, I know his, uh, his last week was summar summarized as, uh, uh, they couldn't get past my negotiator on defense. So good job. Little Gator clear your territories, play with your ships. And there is division two for the month. And, who is that at the top? Who is the only undefeated this month? That would be me. Is that you at the top, Fort Moore? Don't think so. Okay, so before we move on to the big boys, we move on to the big boys this week. Uh, as you know, uh, as you know, uh, last week, um, we had to say goodbye to somebody, didn't we, Flair? Yes, very, we did. Very, very, very... Um, important and magnetic person in the community. The very, very first content creator to actually live stream GAC back when it was GA. 
you know, I mean, I follow, I followed him about two weeks after he started doing GA because I watched him, realized how much fun it was and thought, I want to do that. So I wanted to emulate the one, the only Urza Tron, the heartthrob of the Outer Rim. So we've got a little tribute for Urza. So stay tuned. happen to GAC now? The community has weathered this type of thing before. You will see others rise, I promise. There's no doubt the heartthrob of the Outer Rim was the best. Always more there are. Well, more or less. Some experts, others entertainers. But what will fill the void? Expertise or entertainment? And so closes an epic, storied, and entertaining chapter in the annals of Swago Gaming history. We bid a very fond farewell to Urzatron, the innovator who brought us the most entertaining GAC livestreams as he now departs Swago on his way to explore new gaming realms. But fear not everyone, this does not mark the end of his channels. While it may no longer feature Swago GACs, Urza's Hollow Table Hall has not closed its doors. Make sure you continue to follow the heartthrob of the Outer Rim as he continues to provide us all with his unique brand of live streaming gaming entertainment, including coverage of the upcoming game Star Wars Squadrons. All of us here at the Escape Pod, Castaways, Content Creator Network, wish Urza continued and everlasting success. And while we will undoubtedly miss having him in our specific gaming community, we also cannot wait to see what he has in store for us next. May the Force always be with you, Urza. And welcome back. I uh, hope you like that little tribute that Hellenics put together uh, for the channel. Gotta say, Hellenics did an amazing job putting that thing together. I was, I was all choked up and everything. That was, that was wonderful. Hellenics, was. excellent job. Excellent job, Hellenics. Props to the Greek. Props to the Greek. Right, okay, so it's big boy time. Let's get Big boy to time. It. You know what that means, Div 1. So, okay, we are kicking off with Finn. Now, Finn had a good month, 11 and 1. You know, he's good. He, he's good. I mean, three flawless victories. A three flawless victories. Seven full clear wins. He had three triple whammies this month. That's good. That's really, really, really solid. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know what Finn's going to be like in 5v5, but... Uh, He's definitely going to put up some top four position for the other competitors in Div 1 standard, that's for sure. DB, oh man, DB has had, he's just had it bad. Um, you know, week one, he went one and two. Week two was two and one. Week three was one and two again. Week four, he finally came back. Yeah. He came back with a bang. Big bang. Full clear, only three losses. Absolutely wonderful job. Hopefully, DB is back and better than ever. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. For his sake and his sanity. 
I think the less we the less that we talk about DP Kyle's mum for the better because two and ten Ooh. ain't good. He does not like three v three. Let's just he put it that really, way. Really, really, really didn't like. Um, yeah, he really didn't like three v three. Not one little bit. So uh, yeah, obviously no flawless victories, no whammies, no crowns, and he got two full clears for his two wins. But yeah. Uh, DPK is definitely looking forward to the return of 5v5. Mm hmm. But, ah, oh, mm, this hurts as well. Gridzy going six and six. Um, week three, he, um, week, week three, we, you know, me and Rand, we gave him the, the, you know, the, the link to the, you know, the resort that we stayed at, you know, during week two. And he loved it so much. He didn't play in week three. Yeah. That, that, um, that's all you got to do. See, Th there it is. That's the thing. Push the button you know people tell me to do it all the time right it's not hard push the button join yay but uh but no he you know he went one and two in week one two and one in week week two but uh week four he came back with a bang with a triple crown so he made up for it i mean god it's just going nerdy getting seven you know he he's he's still loving it <laughs> Fad is still loving it. I mean, when he got that 3-0 first week of this month, I mean, he, he must have... I mean, I, I don't know what he sacrificed to the RNG gods. You know, I mean, most people do a goat. You know, I'm thinking he may have sacrificed a small child for that 3-0, but that was the best. That was, that was it. That was the best he got. No flawless victories, no whammies, no crowns. Um, and all of his uh, all of his wins were full clear wins, so nothing particularly special. But yeah, that three and zero at the start of the week, start of the month, was definitely the highlight of his month. Can we just comment that he's still rocking it with the high loss count? Oh yeah, he is still rocking the high loss count. He is still high three digits. Don't you dare go over over four digits. Don't you dare. <laughs> no challenge accepted. Uh, Spartan had a. Had, had, had it rough as well you know seven and five um you know he he week one hey hey he told us the resort in week one that rand and i stayed at that grid then stayed at in week three um so he just wasn't there at all he got a two and one in week two got a three and oh in week three but another two and one in week four so um you know hey going seven and five missing a week still not bad Black Mamba, eight and four, really, it, it, it's strange, actually. He did actually have, statistically speaking, he did have a pretty good month. It's just the eight and four that's the disappointing part. I mean, four flawless victories, four full clear wins. He did get a triple whammy, no crown, but I mean, not that many losses, a decent amount of holds, and the wins were there, and a decent banner count for the month. So just that eight and four just looks weird when you take into consideration all the other stats for the month. But eight and four still good for Black Mamba. Ian coming in with a nine and three. Uh, you know, round one, uh, weeks one and two, he got a two and one. Um, you know, even though he got some amazing, he got some good full clears. Um, but you know, still getting some losses here and there. Week three came in with the triple crown. Week four got his full clears, but he lost one of his rounds due to efficiency. So hey, nine and three. You know, especially dealing with Div 1 players is is nothing to scoff at at all. Micaeus, another person that mega loathes 3v3. I mean, he really hates 3v3. More than DPK, I think. Um, I mean, we could ask him, but he's not in chat. He hates 3v3. So 7 and 5, no flawless victories, no whammies, no crowns. 7 full clear wins. For his seven and five. Yeah, he is definitely glad to see the back of uh, 3v3. And he's so happy we've got two more GLs coming to the game that he won't have. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so I've had to condense what Jigabachi has mentioned over the last month because it's amazing. <laughs> it would be uh, a very you know, long, it would be a short story, not an essay. Yes, week one was 3-0. You know, he had 11 losses. He still got through. Week two, he got crushed a little bit, though. Uh, week three, he was going on, taking wins with sunglasses on, jamming out, threw up the great wall to go with it. 
Week four, he was going big willy style with placing salty wrinkles all around and clapping some fools while he was at it. Excellent job taking the 10 and 2 Jigabachi. Bisweez with the 9 and 3. Um, pretty solid week for, sorry, solid month for Bisweez. Uh, he missed the whammy. He missed a triple whammy in week three by a gnat's hair. And I do mean a gnat's hair. Everything was full clear. Uh, he was mm. always picking up losses, you know, two here, three there. So he was never going to get any flawless victories. But, but he had nine full clear wins, uh, which is solid. No whammies, no crowns. Like I said, he was very close to one triple whammy in week three. But apart from that, yeah, just a good solid month from Darth. Darth Biscuit, better known as Bisweez. Wiggins Bog, though. Uh, you know, when we were talking about him, you know, this time last uh, last month, um... You know, uh, was he I, i'm trying to remember he was also he was undefeated last month yeah then he, he come into he, this month he had a no and he had a no and three yeah he had no and three he had an this three month this it was month. week yeah. two um and it, you, he lost the unbeaten record straight away in week one but then to go on and get an oh and three uh came back with a three and oh mm. and then got another two and one wigs had, an, had a really rough month yeah for, not like in the three not like in the three v three wigsy Mm -mm. whatever so yeah whatever had a good he, good month very solid month 10 and 2 four flawless victories six full clears uh two triple whammies i mm, didn't didn't pick up any uh triple crowns kept on getting the you know the odd loss here and there so uh you know still solid full clear wins um but uh yeah just just not quite there for a triple crown unfortunately but 10 and 2 is still an excellent month ranger <laughs> you know so so ranger's a little miffed that uh that you know he has to deal with his buddy finn as well here now um but hey he went 11 and 1 um you know something something life is kyber kyber is life right Kyb kyber's life and life is kyber <laughs> Okay, that's no moon. Was so annoyed, so annoyed with himself. He was undefeated until the last week, and mm. then it just went. It just went. Pe the, the, so many people were nine and zero oh until the last week, and then it just undefeated was just snatched from them. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a triple whammy, a triple crown. He picked up four full clear wins. Sorry, six full clear wins. Four flawless victories. So, I mean, he was on an absolute roll until that last week. So he's going to kick himself. But 11 and 1 is still a really, really good record for Div 1. On to Cubs fan Han going 10 and 2 this month. Uh, you know, and it was 3 and 0, 2 and 1, 3 and 0, 2 and 1. Um, you know, lacked a single full clear in week one. Um, but, you know, he had plenty of fun stuff. Week two, <laughs> he went with 38 losses. Um, and then week four was, was, was just as fun. He went 24 losses. So he was definitely playing with his toys. Mm -hmm. Um, but Hey, 10 and two, despite those loss counts is hey, perfectly fine for him. Bitcoin, another 11 and one, another 11 and one Bitcoin was the complete opposite though. He had his bad week in week one. So he went two and one in week one and then just went from strength to strength, to strength, to strength. So nightmare week one, then week two, week three, week four, whammy, 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 three triple whammies, two flawless victories, and everything else was just a full clear win. So Bitcoin just went full Hulk on all of his opponents after week one. He was not happy with that two and one and just went mad. 11 and one for Bitcoin. And there is, uh, that's how the the bottom looked. So, yeah, DPK is going to want to forget about that very fast. Yep. Lots of people on 7 and 5 for the 3v3. Lots of people on 7 and 5. But look at all them 11 and 1. So many people close to undefeated. Yeah. But, hey, but, but that means we had no one that went in Div 1 standard undefeated. Yeah, nobody went, so. no one went undefeated. Not one <laughs> single person went. Um, and the only person that could have done it in the last week was Moon. The only and... person that could have done it, and he blew it. You blew it, Moon. Yep. You blew it. Okay. Big boy's time, like the big, big, big boy's time. 
was going to scorch the hoss. Something, something wrestling. I, I still don't <laughs> get half the references you two you just don't in get WWE, mate. Don't try. I, uh, yeah, no, I'm not even going to try. He had a five and seven, just, you know, just, just under the, under the 50% mark. But, uh, he, he got to play with his toys. You know, he, he had some fun. Um, you know, stepped in the ring. You know, he, you know, just <laughs> had there, had no in three in week two. Uh, week four was, uh, was just as, rough as well but hey you know week three he got to play with his toys and you know we got to talk wrestling again i don't understand this someone explain it to me anyways moving on oh the aussie adonis had just like average you know an average week um i mean i i have come to the conclusion that we're never gonna get you know a, a professional Heinze when he's doing his GAC because to Heinze GAC is it's time to chill and drink lots of alcohol so uh, yeah um, people are just going to make him drink harder and harder and harder the further and further and further he gets into his GAC so don't be expecting any triple whammies triple crowns or flawless victories from Heinze um, we are you know let, let's just be glad that he, he finished above average well, actually, bang on average, six and six for the month. Paul also got bang on average, and we were kind of surprised at the start of the month. He was he sacrificed some goats. He was getting some two and ones and two and ones. Um, you know, we all went back to form in uh, in week three, but uh, you know, he he started out with a strong bang, and I think he's gonna hold that. He's gonna cherish that in his heart. But after that, everything else is rough. Uh, but so many, so many people on six and six. So many people. Mud bum. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, mud bums week one, week two, and week three were just horrendous. Like mm -hmm. literally, every, you know, one and two, <laughs> one and two. <gasps> yeah, one and two. So he went one and two in weeks one, two, and three. He he just wasn't feeling it, and then. As if by a miracle, he got a 3-0. Um, it, it wasn't a real miracle, though. He just got his second GL. <laughs> so uh, not so much a miracle as in, yeah, I've got two characters that you can't beat any more suckers, so I'm going 3-0. So that was what saved him. Getting a second GL stopped the abject humiliation of another 1-2. and two. So 6-6 six and six for my bum this month. I do have to say, Mandy had it rough as well. He mm -hmm. went... Five and seven. And, and you know, for, for one of the guys in Mandalore Mall, like you, good lord. Um, he's had it tough. And, you know, three v three is just it's either it's either really good for some people, <coughs> Neil, um, or it's just a slog fest for the rest of them. Um, you know, you went one and two, one and two, two and one, and then you know, he got another one and two in round four and week four. So you know, still got some clears, but ugh, good lord, just tough. Yeah. Absolutely tough. It's tough at the top. He does have the highest GP account in the entire league. So mm -hmm. he's always going to be facing extremely tough opposition. So, yep. uh, you know, it, it, it's tough at the top. Lazy a turtle went five and seven. Every, is it just me or did everybody in the elite division have a really bad month? Either five and seven, six and six, or they did good. Yeah, uh, so, hey, lazy, no flawless victories, no whammies, no crowns. I mean, you wouldn't expect somebody that went five and seven to do that. It, he, he wasn't getting full clears. I mean, his losses just, 69 losses. That's probably the reason why he only scored four full clear victories in the entire month. That's it. There's nothing else really to talk about. But uh, I, I have it on good authority that he's being coached on his ships now. He still hates them, but at least he's being coached. And, and Chad is recognizing the loss count. Ha ha, you're funny. Jake Johnson going six and six, uh, three and oh, two and one, oh and three, and a one and two. Man, Jake started off strong and then just got kicked in the teeth as 3v3 went on. Like, I, you, man. I, I just don't know what to say. He had tons of tons of issues, and six and six is rough. 
six and six is rough, especially for you know a couple of us. That, you know, he has a GL, and you know he's just like, ah, oh, no, still not getting it. And I mean, okay, for someone who complains about three v three as much as Ando does, um, Ando, shh, because you do better at three v three than you do at five v five. Remember your five v five month. You were horrendous. What was it? One and twos, one and twos because of experimenting. Well, you didn't need to do any experimenting here. I mean, four flawless victories, six full clear wins, three triple whammies, dude. Okay, so I, I don't want to hear nothing from you about 3v3 being bad because clearly you have a roster that can handle itself rather well when it comes to 3v3. 11 and 0 for Ando. Ram Bam had a really good month as well. He went 10 and 2. Um, did a hang on solid job. Um, you know, didn't get some full clears here and there, but you know, played some really good defensive games throughout it. He did have to deal with a potential cheater in the final week. And uh, I don't think we've heard any resolution about that. But hey, Ram Bam, you're gonna be pretty happy when you figure out where you stack against the rest of your people in your division. So excellent job, 10 and 2. Dyla, oh, just <laughs> when his first week was just, it, he, it was an incredible start. You know, he, he, he got a triple crown week one. You, you, you get a triple crown week one, you're floating on air and you're thinking to yourself, wow, yes, here it comes. So three floors victory and a triple crown week one. And it just went to pot after that. Just eight and four. So he picked up. Five more wins in the month. It just, yeah, it did not go well for him. Um, so he picked up three all clear wins for the rest of the month after his triple crown in week one. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that. He's another competitor with 3v3 fatigue. He'll be glad to see the back of it. The Grand Admiral coming in with a nine and three. Uh, you know, Start of the week, you know, it, the start of 3v3 just kind of went went, went kind of bad for him. He had a one and two, had a good amount of losses there. Two and one, seven losses, uh, didn't get full clears. Week three, he came back with a vengeance. He said, all right, no, the Empire's putting its fist down. We're getting a three and oh, uh, full clears all around. Not completely perfect, but, you know, did everything. And again, ending out the week, Empire did its Empire thing. Got another three and oh, um, you know, hey. The end of the month started out much better than the start of the month. So good job, Arnold. That's Grand Admiral to you. Grand Admiral. Yes, Fine. that's better. Show some damn respect. Wow. Indigo. Nine and three. Um, he did get a triple. I mean, he didn't get any whammies or crown. He did actually get a triple in week one. But because he didn't get the full clear, no whammy. No whammy for you. No whammy for you. He didn't get any full. Didn't get any flawless victories. Everything was uh, full clear wins. Um, so he got six full clear wins. Nine and three, still a lot better uh, than everybody else's record. You know, with every with so many people getting eight, uh, with so many people getting five and sevens and six and sixes, a nine and three is a really nice big chunky leap for the elite division. So uh, yeah, good month for Indigo. And and Klesso coming in with a 10 and 2, you know, guy who's a powerhouse when it comes to getting his banners. Uh, you know, we just take a look at, you know, he got a you know, two and one straight out of the gate in week one. Um, had a painful 14 losses, just two wins shy of a full sweep. Uh, week two, he did get a triple crown, though. Week three was a little painful, losing a single one of the rounds by a single banner. Came back with a vengeance, though, in week four with that three and O. Oh. Uh, but hey, his banner count really reflects how well he actually plays. Oh god, yeah. Klesso's banner count is always impressive. Always impressive. Exactly. So 10 and 2. Good job. Oh, Zaref did not have a good month. Um, the, the, the 3v3 fatigue pretty much ticked him off. Uh, it, it was a 2 and 1 month. But we, we kind of expect more from Zaref. We, we, we usually see 3 and O's, 3 and O's, and every once in a while, you know, on those blue moon occasions, you might see the occasional 2 and 1. So to see a full month of 2 and 1, yeah, very, very much unlike him. One flawless victory, seven full clears, but no whammies and no crowns because everything was 2 and 1. I, I have no doubt he is going to come back with a vengeance when 5v5 kicks off this week. 
Absolutely. End all, be all. Look at this. This is a 12 and 0, people. I, is this the only one we have up here in the elite division? Yeah. So, so end all is going to be crowning, is going to be just raising a fist in the air saying, good job. Um, you know, he had some, he had some rough battles here and there. I mean, he had 74 losses throughout the course of the month, but hey, he is the only one taking a 12 and 0. Much respect to that. Yeah, Excellent the, job, the, Endall. Endall's defense was impeccable this month. It was, it was, it long. was incredible. The amount of territories he held this month was, yeah, you, if, if, if you want to know exactly why he got the 12 and 0, go to his channel and watch all of his GACs from the 3v3 month and see just how hard he made it for his opponents to clear his territories because none of them did. None of them. Mm -mm. Solo base did a little bit better than his uh, uh, Gambit podcast co-host. Uh, so uh, he went 10 and 2. Uh, he got more full, more flawless victories than Zareth. He picked up two. And uh, he still picked up the same amount of full clears. But he did get a triple whammy over Zareth. So, uh, you know, if, if there's any little, you know, fisty cuffs or, you know, like sibling rivalry between the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the Gambit podcast hosts, Zareth and Solo, that's where it is. Solo, you got a whammy up on Zareth and two rounds. So I hope you're happy, mate. And rounding it off, guys, it's finally happened. It has finally happened. <gasps> Fruit Ninja Mike has lost a round. Yeah, this is not a typo, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a typo. Uh, and it came from the last round of week four. Um, and it literally came down to, what was it? A single battle difference? I want to say it was like a single battle difference, but you there, know, there was the one first... battle. He he underestimated. There was one of the yeah. battles and he underestimated it. And also he had some bad RNG in his favor when he was trying to go against a slacker in round uh, round three, week four. But, um, you know, the first three weeks were, were nothing but easy for him. You know, got a triple crown in week three. But man, just got to round four and the dream died. And uh, and with it. With it, now everyone's competing to see who's going to be the who's going to try and take him over. I think yeah. that's going to be the case. Going to be interesting, but, you know, we're about to get to the tables now. So let's have a yes, look we are. at the final tables for the end of the second month. We are one third of the way through the season. So. Oh, actually, no, we quick, quick look at how people were for the month. So, yeah, I was, I, was, I was like, wait, yeah, wait I was about to say, yeah, I'm, I'm jumping the gun there. I'm jumping the yeah, gun there. Come on. Look at all them five sevens and sixes and sixes. Just way too many. Hey, Paul got a six and six, though. Yeah, Paul did get a He's six and six. He's happy with that. He's happy with that. He's and not last. Look at that. Look at that. End all, end all pipped Fruit Mike Ninja. The top this month. The only undefeated Div 1 elite play. The only Div 1 full stop. The only mm -hmm. person that went undefeated in Div 1, period. So we've got 30 competitors in Div 1 split between Standard and Elite, and Endor was the only one who went undefeated by a month. Although, I mean, we do have to notice, though, that if you look at it, if Endall did lose a single match, Fruit Ninja Mike would have had him. Completely. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. Would have had him on banner straight away. Yeah, would have had him bang to rights. Okay, so that is what the table looks like for Div 5-6. Blair, you're only three behind Brain Kill. I mean, you're like 5,000 banners behind Brain Kill, but you're only three wins, round wins behind him. So, you know, like, like I said earlier on, if just go 12 and 0 for the next four months and you might win. Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Yeah, we'll see about that. Three and four, this is where it's getting. Vendetta dropping one and Olimar not dropping any has just, it's closed the gap to one round now. And I'm just, oh, Olimar. Hold on, hold on. You said Vendetta dropped one, but the table shows it's uh, 21 and 0. That would be a Paul error, not me. We'll have that corrected. Oh, he grabbed the wrong, he grabbed the wrong table. Oh, okay. We'll have he that fixed. Wrong table. This will be. So this is, is this my error? This is my mistake, is it? I think this might be you. It's my, this is me then, yeah. Okay, so if this is me, um, you know, I can 
look at, I know at the other table, that means all the Mars at the top. Yes. That means all the Mars at the top. So if I'm looking at the wrong tables for that one, I'm, I must have done the wrong table then. I must have done the wrong, I must have, obviously, obviously it's a week out, that uh, Division 3, mm. uh, three four, one. But Although, look at that, we, look, you, I am... When we look at Div 2, Fort oh. Mort. Fort Mort's got you there. Feel the pressure, Fort Mort. Feel it. I mean, okay, hey, look, you may have banners on him, but he's got a win on you. And if he does as well as he's been doing, he, he's, he's still going to be just above you. I'm, I'm just, you know, I mean, the, I'm, he's got one round. One round. One round is all it takes. All, all I have to do is tie with him, and I crush him with banner difference. I crush you. Crush you in banner difference. Absolutely destroy you in banner difference, Fort Mort. Not just crush you, destroy you. So I'm going to go 12 you, and 0. You've got to hope that your goats will, will, your goat sacrifices will work. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm going to sacrifice a goat every single round just so <laughs> that the RNG gods don't screw me up. So, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, just, just don't slip up, Fort Mort. Don't slip up because I'm going to be right there. Right there. Division one, standard bottom. Uh, yeah, we, we know DPK didn't like this month. Mm -mm. Um, DB is definitely going to be happier this month than he was last month. Because yes. obviously he's now 12 and 12. So, you know, and he went 7 and 5 this month. He went 5 and 7 the month before. Oh. So, yeah, he's definitely going to be happier. All he needs to do now is get his game back to where it used to be. Mm -hmm. Same with Gridzy. But, I mean, Gridzy, G G Gridzy's there through his own fault i mean if he hadn't missed the week you know if he hadn't missed that week there's no way he'd be 13 and 11 right now i'm telling you this resort was amazing that's why <laughs> everyone recommended it to us but uh but i mean just look at thaddeus he's he's <laughs> this number is gonna get better as we go yeah i know that is just ridiculous 216 but you're he's like you're adding like 100 battle losses every single month so at least we know he's probably not gonna hit four digits that is not licensed for you to deliberately start losing just to get a 1K next to your Challenge name. Challenge accepted, I think, is what he's saying. Challenge accepted. Okay, and there is the top. And oh man, Bitcoin leading the leading the leading the pack there. Yeah, you you, you want to know who's not going to be happy with this table? Ranger. Ranger, <laughs> Ranger is so <laughs> not going to be happy. <laughs> the fin is above him. Ranger uh, is going to be Finn. so pissed that Finity is above him right now. Oh, man. Rangers. Yeah. Ha have fun with that, Ranger. You hey, you two can go and deal with that argument later. But uh, but right now, Finn's ahead. Yeah. We got, we got, it's nice and tight. It's going to be close. So, uh, you know, we're only two months in. We've got four months left. So we're only one third of the season through. But it's going to be interesting to see just how much... Finn and Ranger go for each other's throats over the next few months. <laughs> and there is Division 1 Elite Bottom. Obviously, lots of 6 and 6 and 5v5, so it's the same people in the bottom. Ando is going to be overjoyed with that 11 and 1 that he got. You know, we, we do have a fight that there is a bit of a rivalry between Ando and Rambam at the moment. Um, Ando's always at the top of the bottom table and Rambam is always at the bottom of the top table. So they are literally neck and neck. It is banners. So it's going to be a fight between those two as to who occupies the last space and the first space in those two different tables. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and there's Rambam. You are not going to get me. So if we look at that, see, look there. 50, they're both on 15 and nine. So it literally is banner difference at the moment. Yep. It is banner difference. Ando, you're not at the, you're at the top of the bottom table, <laughs> and Rambam is the bottom of the top table. So um, technically, he's ahead of you. But technically, uh, yeah. But I mean, so despite the fact that Mike has finally been dethroned as the uh, you know as undefeated, um, he is still still running away with banners, completely. The, yeah. the next person to be close to him is Zareth. And that would require uh, Mike to be losing four battles. 
and Zaref to be going undefeated. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's why I think he'll be glad to. See, I mean, they're both going to be glad to see five v five back. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 going to be interesting. We're just gonna let's see what happens at the end of uh, at the end of the next month. The, at the end of next month, it will be the halfway point of the season. So uh, we'll be able to take stock and give everybody some, you know, some data and some stats and kind of tell them what, what, they, they, what they're going to need to do if they want to be in the top 10 so that they can make it into the Premier League for, uh, you know, next season of GA Centre. Mm-hmm. But that's it. That is it for everybody. Absolutely. That is how the standings are after two months. Man, it's been, a, happy. it's been a month. Two it's been months. a month for everyone. Yeah. So, uh, hey, uh, Neil, what do we what do we got on the other side of this? We have an interview with the Ooh. one with with the one and only undefeated, nay, nay, the only undefeated competitor in the league, Bulldog. So, stick with us because we're going to be interviewing him after this break. You guys over there. Are you a member of Team Paul or Team Neil? Maybe you prefer story time with the llama or dabble in the buttery side of the force with Biscuit Weasel. Or maybe you like the escape pod talents from down under like Heinze and Scotty. No matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the Tee Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast's Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Podcast. Does your guild want to tap into their full potential in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah! For as low as $1 a month per guild member, your guild can unleash the power of the game in ways you never thought possible. Track your arena movements, guild progression, and much, much more. Contact Shitty Bill and get one of his shitty bots on your server today. Just look for him on our Discord server and tag or message him for more information. The link for our server is below in the description. Shitty bots, don't let the name fool you. SWGOH.GG is your one-stop site for the raw data behind the game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. From complete gear lists to intuitive stats behind all of your favorite holotable heroes. SWGOH.GG has it all. With a .GG account, you can get a complete view of your own roster, see how you match up against other players, and even check out the history of your own Grand Arena Championship matches. You can also see what your opponent used on you to give you a better understanding of counters and team compositions to improve your gameplay. Did you know that they also have some great Patreon features as well? Ad-free browsing of their site, guild information, and manual information requests are included in their three levels of Patreon support. Check out the site for more details. That's swgoh.gg. Unleash your holotable potential today. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest today needs no introduction. He is the big dog of the GA Center Leagues. He is undefeated. He has gone 24 and 0. And he may only be in Div 5, but pound for pound, he is the Floyd Mayweather of our little Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes community. In that, he has the best statistics than anybody else, even better than Fruit. Welcome, Bulldog. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, so, so yeah. So right now, um, we like to do on these month recaps. We're liking to to, to highlight, um, you know, the 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 big stats. Um, and and obviously, you're undefeated. You're the only one in all of GA Center that is undefeated. Um, you know, last month we had Mike because he was the top of the elite division. But uh, but you know, he he's now undefeated. He de- he's now been defeated. You you have the only claim to fame there. Um, but yeah. So we're gonna we're just you know just a couple of questions. Just kind of see. Um, we want to make these a little more general about GAC in general, not just kind of the last week or the month. Um, just kind of see, you know, how how things go for your account, what you decide, uh, what you work on. Um, so yeah. Um, 
I think just kind of the first thing is, um, so we know you had a, a, a much bigger account uh, previously and the circumstances behind that and everything. And so you're, you're here with a Div 5 account. Um, anything that, obviously you're probably going with a different mindset than some other Div 5 players would. You know, this is your second account um second kind of main account that you've played um is there any big changes like play style that you would you're doing at this level that you probably think others aren't doing well it's uh it's definitely focused it's focused ex extensively on gac and there there's certainly so many advantage that I, that advantages that i have that a lot of people i'm going against don't mm -hmm. one being that i've played i played through it before so so I know exactly, kind of exactly what I want to do. I think we've all probably got some, some like characters on our roster or anything like that, that we wish we hadn't invested in or, or that type of thing. So because I'm starting over, I was able to, to kind of correct some of those mistakes. And my account's been all about having the most efficient GP possible. I've kind of designed my, I'm, I'm undefeated, not because I'm good at playing GAC, but because I've developed my account specifically for that. Mm. And my, my matches honestly are completely uninteresting. I've streamed some of them, but I haven't done a lot of streaming just because they're so boring because I, I frequently have more G13s on my account than the other seven in my, in my little pod combined. So it's just a complete mismatch. And that's why I, I'm essentially exploiting the, the terrible matchmaking that this game, that this game has. Mm -hmm. So it's terrible, but it's, it's consistent. And because it's consistent, we know how to exploit it. And I've kind of done some of those things to, to develop my roster specifically for GAC. So very tightly focused roster, you know, you're not, you're, there's not a lot of fluff everywhere else. It's, it's all GAC focused. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And because of my, my reputation certainly gives me an advantage because I'm also able to get into a higher guild than a lot of people I'm facing. Mm -hmm. So, so that helps, helps me get like, I'm very close to having the negotiator seven stars. A lot of people at my level aren't going to have that. Yeah, um, no. I've got, got what that type of thing. I it's uh, and, and part of that is, is my reputation getting me into a better guild than, than I really should be in. Mm -hmm. See, your experience and your knowledge, without your experience and without your knowledge, uh, you wouldn't be getting such unchallenging matches in GAC. The, 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 like, like you said, your reputation. So you're in a one of the top guilds. You're in a much, much better guild than someone who would be, you know, 12 months in, brand new to the game, doesn't know about the Discord servers, doesn't know about the community, isn't as closely knit in. So... You really, really are taking advantage of a um, a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of tools in order to be as efficient as you are with GAC. So w when was it that you decided that you were just going to really, really focus in on your account specifically for GAC and, and kind of put to the put to the side the squad and the fleet arenas and put to the side the territory battle? When were you thinking, right, I am just focusing in on GAC for this account? And I, I do focus on, on squad arena. I make sure I've got enough in squad arena that I can take number one and get all those crystals. Mm -hmm. So I maybe not as good at squad arena as I could have been, but it's not like I'm completely ignoring that either. But it's been it's been since the very beginning, just because I honestly Grand Arena is about the only part of the game that I that I actually like. Yeah. Um preach. Grand <laughs> Arena and raids. So and right now we don't have any raids that are that are really all that relevant. They're all old. So mm -hmm. if a new raid comes out soon, I would probably start and start kind of pouring resources into that. But right now I yeah, Sith Raid would help me get better rewards, but it's just not all that interesting because it's old. So Grand Arena is what's because it's PvP and how it's set up, it is something that's constantly evolving, and that's really just the area of the game that interests me right now. So what, what type of uh, resources are you pouring into your roster, specifically with GAC at mind? I mean, what's your crystal income from the squad and fleet arena? And uh, if you don't mind asking, how much are you spending from a whale dolphin perspective on resources to bolster your rosters, sorry, to bolster your roster and your squads for GAC? So I, I take I take one in fleet arena every day with, with no issues. As I said, I've got... Um, I've almost got a once. Uh, once we get uh, actually, by the time this airs, I will have a seven star negotiator. <laughs> Good <laughs> uh, So I never, I never fall. I think six to the fallest that I've farthest that I've fallen. Yeah. So that's 
won with ease every day, which is kind of nice not having to do, <laughs> do those battles. Uh, squad arena, sometimes I have to do a refresh to get number one, but I'm still able to get up to number one every day. So it, it's basically 900 crystals there. And then I've, I've spent way too much money on this. But uh, my, uh, my approach to this has been I'm spending pretty much everything that I get from, from YouTube um, and all of the money that comes in from those videos on into this account. So this account went, it was actually a Horde account as well, which kind of helped me, helped me get started. But that went live in Arena first, like first of February. And so I've spent, Jeez. I think I'm at a little over 3K since then. I haven't <laughs> updated. So, so yeah, that, that is also a reason I'm undefeated. Um, spending Money, all, money helps. Yeah, money absolutely helps. And I, I can't, I never would have thought that I was spent spent this much money on on a mobile game so my on my previous account i spent i think it was about a thousand over three years which is still a lot mm -hmm. but and nothing like cranked it up nothing like one. 3k and it, it's i really it's it's kind of given me a whole new perspective because i've i mean you hear these people talk about they don't realize how much they're spending and everything like that and i i realize because i i keep track of it all because that's literally how much i can spend is what i get in from the youtube videos but it's it's weird how okay spending a hundred dollars to go from gear twelve to gear thirteen has just like become normal and it's just like an accepted expense, mm -hmm. and that just it's it's kind of crazy. So how and, long did you hold at twenty seven on the account before? Uh, so what how how you know how much in cantina energy and squad arena energy and so, how much how much uh, um, resources did you hoard for at level 27 before tipping over and going to 28 on that account? I can't, I can't remember the exact number of energy and all that, but I, I started it back, back in whenever, whenever we had the whole first ban ordeal. Um, was that September? Has it been about, has it been almost a year? It feels like it's been a while. I, yeah. I can't even remember. So yeah, whenever, I wasn't sure if I was going to come back to the game or not or what I was going to do, but I was like, okay, I'm just going to sit on this Horde account for yeah. a little while and mm -hmm. just in case I decide I want to restart. Um, actually tried restarting without a Horde account. Yeah, um, we were in the same squad arena. Uh, yeah. Our accounts were in the same squad arena for a time. Um, Absolutely. and got, It was difficult, yeah. I got frustrated because I was trying to do it as free-to-play and you, you just can't compete anymore. And that was even, I think that was before the hyperdrive, wasn't it? No, it was, it was just before the, that, that account, the hyperdrive bundle kicked in on my account, which was in the same, uh, same squad arena shard around 28. But as you, um, uh, hoarded your resources on your current account and then spent on it, I was, I hoarded for 150 days. So I hoarded cantina energy and squad arena energy for 150 days, but then I went free to play. And the problem that I instantly had as soon as the hyperdrive bundle came out was there were people that like you had held at 27, hoarded resources before going to 28, but then they instantly wailed. So when that hyperdrive bundle came out, everybody that had hoarded, uh, you know, 150 300 days they instantly went straight pay to win and they instantly started spending so their rosters with the hyperdrive bundle so that everything instantly ballooned um so like i i had to maintain absolute focus in order to be anywhere near decent um regarding um gac because i would come up against hyperdrive bundle accounts that had a bunch of rosters, uh, sorry, a bunch of squads that were then immediately level eight, uh, you know, 85 gear eight. They might not have <laughs> had mods, but yeah. So uh, uh, that's that's what happened with uh, with me on my very similar to you, but I went free to play. You went pay to win on that one. So yeah, no, uh, we, I, I, re I remember <laughs> seeing you, so. remember, I mean, I remember seeing you in the, uh, uh, you know, remember seeing you in the squad arena shard because you like me, you were, you were trying to go free to play but you hadn't hoarded any resources and the top 30 people in that squad arena had hoarded. Um, and I think me and only one other went free to play everybody else in that squad. I wasn't expecting it. I thought you, you've just been hoarding resources to make a good roster. Um, and all of a sudden they started spending on it as well. So it just completely and utterly blew my mind that they'd hoarded all of these resources and then, then they went pay to win. 
Yeah, and I, I don't think a lot of veteran players understand how much money is coming into this game in the early Oh, God, no, early I, no chance. Yeah, those early ones, yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. money. There is insane. I, I've, okay, so I've spent, I mean, I've spent 3K on mine, and I'm not sure I'm a top five spender on my shard. Um, there are already two. There's about to be three Galactic Legends on the shard already. Mm -hmm. Um one one of them had both within a couple months wow and crap. it's just there's just insane amounts of money coming coming into the game it's crazy yeah no the the the, the old one that you were in the, the one that i'm in there's two and that's nine months sorry nine no ten that's about ten or eight ten or eleven months old that one now because i think i went live with that in september so yeah so 11 months basically and a couple months ago a couple people got the the slacker one at 2 million GP and one at 4 million GP. And I talked with the person with four. I mean, 4 million GP in nine months. We're talking like serious amounts of money at this early level. So, you know, th there are a lot of people out there that want to be competitive in Squad Arena. And they really, really want to be competitive in GAC. That's, you know, it, we mentioned it at the start. It is without a doubt the best arena in this game. It's the best feature in this game. And people are prepared to start again and wail on those accounts in order to be able to achieve a, a huge amount of success in GAC, uh, just like you, um, and take that knowledge in, uh, to an earlier account, to a new alt account, and then kind of like reset the clock on, uh, uh, on GAC. So um, uh, with that in mind, what were your thoughts when you first started in GAC with this new account that you'd hoarded on for X amount of months and then that you started to wail on? What was your plan? Because for the past two months, we've been reporting on you being undefeated. What were you thinking? The, I mean, the, the, there's, I mean there, there's several kind of things that can all add up. The biggest one is not adding Zetas very much. So being very stingy with the Zetas, Zetas add so much GP. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you'll see, like I've got like one that I was comparing earlier was like, I've got a gear 13 Vassal Sean Fallen that had, I went up against an opponent that whose Vassal Sean Fallen had the Zeta was 800 more GP, but it was only gear 11. And the, the numbers just don't make sense. My gear 13 was obviously much more valuable, but looking at CG's formula, it says theirs is more valuable. So it thinks wow. I'm at a disadvantage there. Those Zetas, uh, I think they're like 2K GP each. Yeah, it's like it's like 2 or 2.5. Um, it really just depends. I, I know I, I did both the Zetas on Mon Mothma, and it was like, oh, hey, there's like 5,000 GP there. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's equivalent to a couple gear levels, and some of them are worth that, but mm. so, a lot of them are not. And I just, so yeah, that's a, and, and there's a lot that I'm kind of, I probably should put on there, but I'm being more being more passive with those because you you can't take those back. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, and, and it's sure. like you know you have you have Zetas. It's like you know what you're doing is working right now. So it's not like you know when you need to do it, then then you'll consider to do it. Right, and then and that's one thing where it's kind of frustrating that they punish you for focusing on other area, areas of the game where like there's some Zetas that you need. Like uh, like Shock T or something for territory battles or some of those missions where you need those Zetas, but then they don't actually help you that much in Grand Arena. They actually hurt you. So the CG is forcing you to decide whether you want a tougher matchup in GAC or whether you want to actually help your guild in territory battles. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally don't like that, but I mean, even though I'm at a high level guild, we are more laid back, so they're not they're not pushing me to at least not yet pushing me to put some of those Zetas on. Or <laughs> <laughs> maybe was, maybe like a little that. more money later, then they'll start talking. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, I think kind of um, we've kind of done a lot about talking, you know, just how you've gone into GAC and everything. Um, kind of the question we ask everybody, and especially for someone at the Div Five perspective who's played previously, um, what are some teams and some characters that you're working on right now, um, or that you've got that you're thinking about? Um, I know that you're very focused in your roster and what you're wanting to do. Is there anything that you're like, ooh, I want to work on that, or I'm considering working on that? So as far are you talking about as far as like the main teams or like uh, more fun side projects? That's all. Um, <laughs> let's go. Let's go main teams. Um, because I know once like once once you jump up to Div Four, you're placing another team and you're having to have another team on offense. And Div um, Three is there any of those teams is, you're working on? Div Three so, um, Four is the competitive one. Yeah. 
I'm very, I'll be very close to, I won't get in for this next one. I'm hoping maybe by the time like the second round of this next GAC starts, I'll have both General Skywalker and Malik. So I'll be adding both of those <laughs> right <laughs> now. Yeah, gum it. If uh, if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna lose a match, actually this first this uh, this upcoming one is probably going to be where I'm most vulnerable because I've started to add a lot of relics, but I don't have I don't have General Skywalker, I don't have Malik. I'm facing some teams that have that. I saw I actually didn't get a full clear on one of my last ones because mm -hmm. I want to. Yeah, we noticed that. that it was the first time you didn't get a triple crown or a triple whammy in two months, and it was like, wow, you didn't get somebody held you. Somebody had an arena team that I that I couldn't beat. I shouldn't say I couldn't beat, but I normally my Padme team can go up against uh, a Relic Seven Darth Revan squad. But in this case, there was actually there was actually a key dodge that that really hurt me, um, and so I lost that one. But luckily, my my opponent didn't. He actually went full defense, so he had basically nothing on offense. Um, but that helps. I so, could. Uh, I mean, I could potentially run up against a squad that's got like a, one of those Darth Revens or something like that that they can set it on, and I can't. I can't clear it. So I'm a little worried about for that for the next time. But then after that, I should have. I should have Malik and Gas. I've got all of the the GET one saved up to seven star. I think I might fall just short on on Malik, but it'll be six stars at least. So once I get those added to my roster, that's going to make it even even tougher to beat me. So. So you're, you really, I mean, when yeah. you hit Division 4, when you hit the Div 4, Div 3 league, you Total really bang. are going to be hitting that with, hitting the ground running with full Darth Relic, t Darth, uh, full Darth Revan team, full um, gas team. Oh, yeah. Um, you, and you're going to be going into one of the most competitive leagues that we yeah. cover because there, you, there are people that have only lost once or twice. I mean, if you stay undefeated, you could effectively go in and be the king of that division straight away and be able to hold it. So, yeah, very impressive. So, so yeah, it's, and I'm so, I think I'm still, what, 300,000 GP away? Oh, you've got team? plenty of room yeah, then. You've got, so you've, got, got you've got so much time before you get promoted. You've got, you, literally, you have the wiggle room, uh, you have the wiggle room to, to finish those squads before you say, right, okay, it's time to cross that threshold time to hit div four uh you know it's it's clobber in time in div four <laughs> i'm just trying to think wait a second you're okay what what gp is your account is it 2.2 2.2 yeah. yeah you're like just a little over at 150k over me and i'm like good god i'm not even close to gas i'm not even close to malik <laughs> good lord uh this is a clear example of uh of someone who's played much longer than me and also a a, a good influx of wallet <laughs> that, that's that's the key one obviously yeah i i i, I have actually sent recently said i'm I'm done spending in the game so that's, that's obviously changed how i approach the game so but but yeah um neil do you have any other kind of questions or anything like that no no th i just want to say thanks for the uh you know thanks for the insight there are going to be some valuable tips in here especially the zeta one especially how you work your teams um and uh you know focusing on the gac so uh flair why, why don't you ask our guest to pimp his stuff. Absolutely. Bulldog, uh, let people know where you are and what you do and uh, kind of what's coming up the pipeline. So I, I do most of my stuff on YouTube. I have actually, I think I'm going to start doing some more things on Twitch. So haven't really done anything there, but I will be moving over there a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I, one of the most recent videos I did was actually, I think I had six tips for, um, for how to, efficiently build your gp so what we were just talking about so we mentioned the zetas there are some other ones so you could check out that video if you want uh want more of those tips but i've got uh, uh i actually don't even know what i've got coming up i've uh, i just kind of kind of do whatever comes to mind one uh one fun thing that i am going to be doing i which maybe we, we've talked about how my my roster is a is a little insane and unfair. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna give my supporters a chance to change that and make my matches more interesting. Oh. I um, and I, I don't know if people are gonna want to do this or not, but I'm gonna I'm creating a Womp Rat fund where if people who I mean people who donate just like some of the other YouTubers, they can choose to send that money to a Womp Rat fund now. And I'm gonna have polls, and basically they can invest in the, like the worst possible character you could think of. If you want to give me a Relic 7 Ugnaught, I'm going to give my supporters a chance to do that and see if that's Or they could just say, give you a Relic 7 Cup. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> or, or a Mob Enforcer. Yep. 
anything like that. I'm hoping they'll choose some things more interesting. I don't know if they'll do it at all, but we're going to see if... a lot of hope and faith into people. Yeah. With yeah money. I don't... Hey, and well, I mean, people, people, you'd be surprised how much, how much people, uh, um, how much people donate. I was, I've been blown away about how much mm-hmm. uh, donations actually come in, which is surprising me. But uh, so thank you to anybody that does that. But it, uh, I'm going to give them a chance that if they want to make my roster more interesting, they can, they can do that. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe, That's maybe my content that might I would very worthy much of look forward to. coming in. That's definitely something to look forward to that. And uh, we, we'll, we'll, I mean, because we'll be covering you in the league, we will definitely be highlighting any Womp Rat Fund success. So uh, <laughs> if, uh, if you have any success with that, be sure to use them so that we can say, oh, round one, flawless victory. Round two, flawless victory. Round three. Um, yeah, he had to use a Relic 7 cup and it didn't work out the way he wanted. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely keep us apprised on uh, any, uh, any Womp Rat uh, surprises, Womp Rat Fund surprises, without a doubt. I, I will be sure to do that. All right. Um, all right. Any any last thoughts or anything, Neil? No, no. Just uh, thank you for coming on, Bulldog. Yeah, absolutely, Bulldog. It has been a pleasure to have you on here to talk about and and seriously to be the only one undefeated in GA Center right now. Um, it definitely is a a monument right now, and and hopefully the Womp Rat Fund doesn't uh, doesn't ruin that at all. Um, anyways, guys, on the other side of this, uh, we'll have a. Have a little bit of a, a clip from uh, from Bulldog stuff, but uh, after this, we'll go back to our thoughts and acknowledgements for the show. So uh, see you there. Thank you much. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Not a problem, mate. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I think I just woke up, Flair, with that. Did I just wake you up, Flair? Huh? Did, did yes, I yell? I... To, did I? Did I shout too loud? Ah! <laughs> loud, loud noises. <laughs> loud noises. Uh, anyway, yes, it's it's thoughts and acknowledgements. So we're at the end of the show. Um, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Bulldog. Uh, we kind of felt it was um, it was an important interview. We needed to get it done. You know, he he literally the only undefeated competitor. Out of all 59 of the competitors that we cover. So, uh, you know, I think it was a choice um, interview to get. And uh, he was uh, very willing to come on and, and do that interview. So, uh, thanks a lot to Bulldog for uh, coming on. Uh, Absolutely. Let's see how I, long I you maintain really that undefeated championship run. Yes. And I think it's also fun for us to do um, these kind of acknowledgement um, interviews at the end in the month reviews, um, you know, having um you know we had mike on for the first month review we've had bulldog now for the second one who knows who we're gonna have for the third one um i imagine we're gonna be interviewing at some point the the man with the most losses in ga center at some point but um but who knows who knows um we do have one more announcement to make though we do have one more announcement to make earlier on in the show when we were covering bringer um bringer of death uh dijun darren now uh, he has uh, um, hung up his uh, Mandalorian helmet. Um, he's no longer playing Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. He was Div 3. So we are replacing him with a straight like-for-like like swap. Um, so there, there, there may have been some rumors floating around about who who's coming in. So I don't think that they are in chat right now. I haven't seen them. But if somebody wants to get in touch with them, we will be adding them to the GACN network server very, very momentarily. As soon as we've got the invite to her, we just need someone to send the invite to her. In hint. But it is none other than Kate Gaming. Woo! Kate Gaming has um, been making quite a name for herself on Twitch. She's a uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes streamer. And she has a Div3 account, a very solid Div3 account, uh, actually. And she will be replacing Bringer as our uh, Div3 person. We needed somebody that was roughly the same GP as him and in the same Div as him. Did not have the time to go looking or and scouring the internet for other Div3 players. It's easy to replace Div1 players because there are so many people out there that are Div1 players. So it's, it's true. It's it's a, it's a lot easier to find people, so that's why Finn, you know, we did a nomination. We picked three. 
and the comp the competitors from Div One chose who was going to be competing against them. Different kettle of fish when you go down the lower divisions. It's much much harder to find people that not only have uh, these low div accounts, but actually either post the content or stream because those are one of the rules. But mm -hmm. all of the competitors, you got to post it or you got to stream it. And we know that Kate streams. She's been a regular guest on the Chain Gang um, for the past couple of uh, for the past couple of weeks. Actually, no, for the past month, I think. Um, so she regularly gets a guest spot there. So it was kind of a no brainer. Um, she knows her stuff. She knows how to play the game. So yeah, welcome Kate Gaming to the league. Ladies and gentlemen, she will be our newest person. Absolutely. And uh, hey, we are at the part of the show where we do our thoughts and acknowledgements for everyone who's followed, who's given a raise or anything like that. And uh, we actually do have a uh, couple of a uh, couple of uh, recognitions to make. So uh, we did get a raid earlier in the stream from Grand Admiral Steve. Thank you, Grand Admiral Steve. Yes. Um, and then we got a couple of follows. We had a follow from Short1414. Uh, from Silas O'Malley, from Neon Crystal Wolf, from Jack Now 99, High Ground 42069. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then from T Bone Kelly 123. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, uh, Escape Podcast is now sitting at 547 followers. Ooh. So uh, you all are awesome and amazing. And uh, thank you all for uh, for continuing to show the support that you all do to this channel, to this show, and everything that the Escape Pod Castaways Content Creator Network is uh, doing. Sorry, what was that? Was 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 that a non sequitur to me? Then was it? I think I think that was a non sequitur. That was I... a non sequitur to me. Was it? Okay, so hey, um, hope you've enjoyed the last couple of months. Um, we will be back. Obviously, we will uh, uh, we will have an interesting interview <laughs> next week. <laughs> Very, very interesting interview next week. So, uh, yeah. 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 In your dreams, Fort <laughs> Moore. In your I'm dreams, I'm happy buddy. for this one. He's not. Um, but, yeah. yeah I, I mean, we're, hey, we're getting ready to go into another 5v5 season. I'm ready to rock this one. So, this is this. Where I am right now, 5v5 is kind of my jam. I've already taken a look to see who I'm going up against first. It's going to be an easy one. <laughs> I haven't looked at anybody, but since uh, I'm not doing the quad, um, I, I, I need to I need to man up. I need to be a little bit more serious with my main account if I'm to crush Fort Moore. So I will not be playing. <laughs> I will not be doing GAC streaming on four accounts anymore. I've done quad Kyber back to back on stream. I've got nothing more to prove regarding that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put a little bit more emphasis on my main account. Hmm. Um, to make sure I can secure victory over Fort Moore. Because that's, that's literally all I care about now. That's all I want. You just want to beat Fort Moore? So all I want to do, Fort Moore, is beat you. <laughs> um, and for those asking in chat, um, we will have Kate's uh, information, stats, everything updated into the, the scoreboards at the start of, uh, of week, week nine. Of the end coverage. of week nine. Week nine coverage. So, and uh, yeah, uh, so we'll, we'll we'll pick up at the very beginning of this first five v five week with that. Um, other than that, uh, Neil, what's going on on the uh, around here in the Escape Pod cast? Well, um, uh, we've been uh, we've been doing some good stuff. Um, obviously, we have some rather big and breaking news to discuss this Friday, and uh, I have an extremely interesting guest. Not Swagger related. Every now and then we like to bring on a guest to mix things up, do something fun and interesting. So uh, uh, I, have, uh, I have a guest from the cosplay world coming onto the Escape podcast this Friday. Um, uh, uh, she does cosplay for anime and for Star Wars. Oh. So uh, yes, I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, uh, bringing a friend of mine on. She enjoys cosplay and she's very, very good at it. Interesting. Okay. Obviously, GAC streams will be back in session as uh, you know, once we, uh, now that we've gotten out of this break period. So, isn't that right, Neil? It's time for yeah. It's time for that thing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, and and GAC streams will be back in session for me as well. Um, we'll be doing some other stuff. Uh, I know that I am a uh, biscuit weasel and I are doing our our weekly session of biscuits and starlords tomorrow night on his channel. Um, and then I'm going to be trying to get back into just covering some other games. Um, 
just kind of getting back in the saddle with a couple of stuff. There's some stuff I need to go back and finish. So, um, but yeah, so um, other than that, guys, I think this has been a, uh, it's been a fun, fun month. And yeah. I think we are, uh, we're ready to get back to 5v5. I'm yeah. ready. Oh, yeah. I, I got to oh. beat Fort Moore, so uh, <laughs> let's get it on. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning into GA Center. Uh, this has been your month two review. Um, tune in next week. We'll be starting up month three. Um, again, thank you all so much for the continued support you all have shown us in the show. Um, and uh, yeah, so Neil, any any closing remarks, any final acknowledgments, anything like that? No, nope, no, nope. let's wrap it up. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Neil, hit the button. You got it, mate. It's half an hour, folks. See you, everyone.